In other words, he went up there looking for a relative of his uh, Abraham's cousin or son or whatever it was. And um, it, it's, it, in other words, you can see God's hand all over this. The, the divine appointment of her showing up. And you go back real quickly to verse 15, or I'm sorry, 16. It says, now the woman, young woman was very beautiful to behold. A virgin, okay? So first off, she's beautiful. The Bible acknowledges beauty. There's nothing wrong with that. And secondly, she's a virgin. Now, let me, real quickly, I want to, I want to see this. I want to look at this if it's in this, per oh, I got it right here. I'm sorry. This is the book I want. I want to check something, and then we're going to have a little talk about it, if, in fact, it's what I'm looking for. Uh, it's chapter 24, and what verse was that? 16. Um, uh, and it may not be, and if it's not, we're not going to worry about it. And the girl was form, uh, very maod, okay? It says she's very lovely in form. The word is maod, wow, okay? And it says, um, oh, and it says she's uh, Beth, Bethuel, okay? So it does use the word virgin, actually virgin, unlike Isaiah 14, which is what I was going to bring up. Isaiah 14 is the word Alma, which can mean a young maiden and not specifically a virgin. And I just wanted to see if they used that term there. Now, I can go through the Bible sometime and pick out other times where they have taken the word Alma and translated it as a virgin and uh, show the hypocrisy of people that change that one particular verse. But in this case, it does say an actual virgin, no doubt about it. So anyway, we'll go on from there. And um, uh, go ahead, please. Then the young woman ran and told her mother's household about these things. Rebecca had a brother whose name was Laban. Laban ran out toward the man to the spring. As soon as he saw the ring and the bracelets on his sister's arm and heard the words of Rebecca, his sister, thus the man spoke to me. He went to the man, and behold, he was standing by the camels at the spring. Okay, why did Laban go running out there? Check out. Yeah. Okay, but why, why, it says something there that points to the reason why Laban is so excited. Sister? Well, it's a sister, gold but the gold, the gold on a ring. What does it say there? It says, uh, so it came to pass when he saw the nose ring, all right, and the bracelets on his sister's wrist. We already know Laban's character, and it will have a bearing on his own daughters and their relationship with Israel what, a hundred years later or sixty years later or whenever Isaac has his son Jacob and Jacob goes up and uh, Laban is the father, in other words, of Rachel and Leah, the wives of, uh, or the mothers of the twelve sons of Israel, okay? We already have an accounting of what type of person he is because the first thing the Bible mentions is he saw this and he was like, holy shamoli, he knows that there's money to be gained from this. That's okay. That's so. That's what I the point I was making at earlier. Anyway, please go ahead. He said, "Come in, O, o blessed of the Lord. Why do you stand outside? For have, I have prepared the house and a place for the camels." You see the butter all over the bread with that one. I'm telling you, it's just he is just oh blessed of the Lord. Now everything's ready. I got you all squared away, buddy. Just to, I got you all squared away. Laban's character is so obvious when you read these verses. Okay, please go ahead. The man came to the house and unharnessed the camels and gave straw and fodder to the camels and there was water to wash his feet and the feet of the men who were with him. Then food was set before him to eat, but he said, I will not eat until I have said what I have to say. He is under an oath and this is his primary duty and he wants to make sure that that is done first before anything else, which is, it's, it's noble of him and it's also he probably wants to make sure that he keeps his uh, crown jewels. So uh, I'm just kidding about that. But, you know, he is, he's being honorable in his task at this. So um, anyway, we're, at, uh, we're in Genesis 24, verse 33 right now. Okay, so please, go ahead. Then food was set before him to eat. Oh, oh sorry about the 34. So he said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has greatly blessed my master, and he has become great. He has given him flocks and herds and silver and gold, male servants, female servants, camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old, and to him he has given all that he was. My master made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites. 
in whose land I dwell. But you shall go to my father's house, to my clan, and take a wife for my son. I said to my master, perhaps the woman will not follow me. But he said to me, the Lord before whom I have walked will send his angel with you and prosper your way. You shall take a wife for my son from my clan and from my father's house. Okay, so Abraham even told him the, the angel is going to prepare the way, which is exactly what we see in every part of redemptive history. God is always preparing the way for us, which is exactly the title of the sermon that I preached last night, right, Ken? The way of salvation. And the Lord does every single thing from A to Z for us. There you go. So, uh, uh, anyway, please, go ahead, 41. Uh. I forgot where I'm 41. At. 35? 41. Uh, 24, uh, 41. 41. Then you will be free from my oath when you come to my clan. And if they will not give her to you, you will be free from my oath. I came today to the spring and said, O oh Lord, the God of my master Abraham, if now you are prospering the way that I go, behold, I am standing by the spring of water. That the virgin who comes out to draw water to whom I shall say, Please give me a little drink of water from your jar. <clears throat> and who will say to me, Drink, I will draw for your camels also. Uh, I gotta get over here because I don't know how to work this machine. <laughs> <laughs> be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Before I finished speaking in my heart, behold, Rebecca came out with her water jar on her shoulder, and she went down to the spring and drew water. I said to her, please let me drink. Okay, out of that verse, do you see anything particular in that verse that you just read? Uh, verse 45. In his heart. He wasn't praying out loud. Uh, the Lord searches the hearts and the minds, and he's making a prayer in faith. So people will ask, do I need to actually speak prayers? I, I've had people email that question. I've had people, you know, post that question. Is that something that's necessary? And people get worried about this. Do I need to actually utter a prayer, or is it okay for me to speak to the Lord? Give me, t tell me your thoughts on that. Do we need to speak our prayers, or do we need to not speak our prayers, and why? God knows the thoughts of the heart. heart. He does know the thoughts of the heart. Okay, so you're saying we don't need to speak our... Scripture, I know it's there. Okay. But doesn't Jesus say something about, Lord, you know my, you know my prayer, or you know my... But for their benefit. Okay, sometimes it's true then, right? I think it's for our benefit. Okay, for our benefit. All right. So... I, here, here is what I believe the answer is after having gone through a zillion times in the Bible. Who else does not speak when they make a prayer and it's answered? We have one here. The guy's speaking in his heart. Somebody else makes a prayer and a response is given. Hannah, the mother of Samuel, went to the tabernacle and was speaking in her heart. All she was doing was just her lips were moving, but no words were coming out. And the guy thought she was drunk. And he says, no, Lord, I'm speaking in my heart. And the Lord answered the prayer. Okay? The fact is that a believer does not need to speak a prayer audibly. The Lord reads our hearts and minds. Now, for the benefit of others, we may say a prayer audibly. For the benefit of uh, ourselves in certain circumstances we might. But just so you know, the word or the letter for in the Hebrew alphabet, I'm going to draw it wrong because it's been forever, that's the letter pay. And I can't remember which letter in the alphabet. Um, uh, Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Daleth, Hey. Uh, anyway, it's like the 16th letter of the alphabet is pay. And it's written two different ways. It's written this way and it's written this way. And I know I got that wrong, okay? Uh, don't look at my pays right now because it's been forever since I wrote in Hebrew. But um, anyway, if you can see, the letter pay actually means alf. That's the meaning of the letter pay. All right? And when it's written in a word like um, uh, people, P-E-O-P-L-E, -E, we would write it this way, okay? Like a closed mouth. But when it's written at the end of a word, 
It's called a uh, uh, face of feet. Anyway, face of feet. It's a little different than what I've drawn. Maybe it looks like this. Anyway, I've, I've, I've drawn it wrong, and I'm very sorry. But at the end of a word, like keep, it would be written differently. Not like this, but like this, like an open mouth. All right? And that is giving us an insight into prayer, believe it or not. All right? The reason why is because it says in the book of Romans that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. A prayer of confession must be audible. You have to let the world know that you are confessing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You can't just say, can't pay lip service to the Lord, in other words. If, and I'm talking about in the circumstance that if you are in a place where there is violence against the believer, and you are going to deny speaking out for Jesus. And why would it, that goes back to what we read in uh, 2 Timothy, that one about him being faithful and us being faithless and all that. We need to acknowledge Christ as Lord. Once we've done that, we don't ever have to pray out loud again because we are now in Christ and he's reading our hearts and minds as his children. But a confession of salvation needs to be audible. I do believe that. And, and, and Paul says as much, if you confess with your mouth, and he's probably thinking of the letter pay when he said that. So the word, the letter pay means mouth. And here's a, a, a cute thing. Ah, here it is right here. You've got it right in front of you. Let me draw it out for you so you can see exactly what it is. Uh, thank you. Um, where is the pay? There it is. And they don't give you the pay, Sophie. Doggone it. Um, no, all they get, and I drew the pay right, but the pay so feet comes at the end, or so feet meaning at the end, it comes at the end, and it looks something like this, but it's not exact, I'm sorry, but anyway, I got the pay right, I mean, it's been years since yes. I've drew, uh, written that, but um, anyway, um, uh, what, oh yeah, the word, the letter pay, as I said, also means mouth, and this is just a little tidbit for you, when you're reading the, the Bible, it'll say they, they killed him with the edge of the sword, you remember reading that in some accounts, they slew him with the edge of the sword, it's actually the mouth of the sword. A sword in the Old Testament is actually a devouring instrument, so the word is pecharub, which is the mouth of the sword, it's not really the edge, but we translate it edge because the mouth of the sword would mean nothing to us, but isn't that a, 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 a graphic image of the power of the sword in the Old Testament? Is it's a devouring instrument. Anyway, there you go. Just thought I'd give you that little tidbit in case uh, we forget at some point in the future. Anyway, I think we were on where, 42 or something? Uh, wherever we were. 46. 46. Okay, please. Let down her jar from her sofa and said, Drink, and I will give you camel's drink also. So I drank, and she gave the camel's drink also. Then I asked her, whose daughter are you? She said, the daughter of Bethel, Nabar's son, whom Melchah bore to him. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her arms. Then I bowed my head and worshipped the Lord and blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has led me by the right way to take the God of my master's temple for his son. Now then, if you are going to show steadfast love and faithfulness to my master, tell me, and if not, tell me that I may return to the right hand or to the left. Okay, so he just wants an answer. He's given the whole account of why he's there, what happened. He's even indicating that this must be divine because it came out exactly as I had asked. And uh, so now he's saying, do I turn to the right hand or to the left? That's a way of, ask, uh, of saying, tell me which yes, way to go. Right. Yeah, is it a yes or a no? That's right. Now, going back real quickly, because every time I read this verse, and you're going to think I'm insane when I say this, but I, I have to tell you, because after I give you this, every time you read this verse, you're going to think exactly what I think. Um, it says, um, then I asked her and said, whose daughter are you? And uh, she said, the daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milcah bore to him. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her wrist. Whenever I read that, I think of the song Ahab the Arab by, what's the guy's name? Oh. The, he did all of the, the <laughs> Ray Stevens. He says, oh, a ring on her, uh, whatever, uh, something on her toes and a bone in her nose. Ho, ho. <laughs> anyway, every time I read that, I, I get Ahab the, a -Arab the oh, Ahab the Arab's song in my head. So now whenever you read that, you'll have that stuck in your head too. I just, Plus, 
Did he just pierce her nose right there? No, she probably already had it pierced, but he, he gave her, and it could be just a clip-on ring, but my guess is it was already pierced. That was, yeah, it could be a clip, but, you know, my guess is she already had it pierced. It was a common thing back then is to wear nose rings, and they still do to this day. I mean, if you see a lot of them, they wear those things here, and they pull the thing over their head, and they go, 